we have with us at the head table our very own Prime Minister, the Honorable Dr. Ralph E. Gonzalez, and I know he will have much to say to us, and I will welcome him to bring the feature item or the feature address to us today. Honorable Prime Minister. Mr. Chairman, the Permanent Secretary, the Ministry of Health, the Honorable Luke Brown, Minister of Health and other Ministers of Government and medical personnel, doctors and nurses and other health professionals and very distinguished individuals one occupation or the other it's a very good afternoon I want to adopt everything that Luca said and call what he has said my own and therefore I will add see if I could put value additional to what he has presented. I want to affirm that the health system in St. Vincent and the Grenadines is sound. I want to repeat that. The affirmation that the health system in St. Vincent and the Grenadines is sung. The health system in St. Vincent and the Grenadines is not perfect. But our health system, if we truncate it in different areas, we can say that our public health system is very good. Our primary or community health service is good. Our secondary health care system is sound with some gaps. And our tertiary health care system requires further strengthening but in each particular area of the disaggregation of our health system when we look at the major health indicators you would see that our system is sound. In fact, our health system is at a level which comparatively across the world of a good quality. Now, let us begin with some of the basic indicators. Water is the single most important requisite in a sound health system. Water. On St. Vincent, where we have a lot of rainfall and rivers, we have arguably the best delivery of quality water in the Caribbean and one of the best 
in the world. You know, in elementary biology, we used to be told that the human body consists mainly of water. Ninety-eight percent of the people in this country, on the island of St. Vincent, we have quality and very affordable pipe-borne water in every single home. In fact, because we have put the catchment areas way up in the top of the mountains and we allow gravity to feed the water downwards. We don't use electricity to pump the water as in St. Lucia or Grenada or in Trinidad. So it's very cheap. In fact, when the water comes, for instance, from Jennings Valley, Jennings Mountain, that water is a quality spring water, but people use it to flush the toilet. I just want to say how fortunate we are. You don't think about that, eh? Eh? You don't think about it? You better start thinking about it. And when you turn on your tap, morning, noon, or night, 99.99% .99 of the time, your water is there. In fact, you are so accustomed to it, that in one time in a year you don't have your water you're on the telephone to shake up or to cool on morning and you behaving with too cool like the world is coming to an end yes yes you know it and I know it. And in 2001, you had under 70% of the people in this country on the mainland of St. Vincent with, with pipe on water in their homes. We carried out large scale connections free of charge. You remember Dr. Thomas is here, he's a man from South Windward. All the way come down to Diamond, come down to Villa. You had shortage of water. Inside, up in Chapman's, in my constituency, up a Dr. Smith and Village, you had to get a four the morning and over down the hole to catch water. Those are things of the past. Amen. Those are things of the past. Nowadays, you don't have any of that problem. Because Jennings water system reaches all down there. If in the middle of the island there is any, there's no water, there's not a sufficiency of water, we have enough there which is coming down. And 
all the systems are interconnected you know the Romans tried to do that when they invaded Britain you know and they didn't complete it because Rome is a wonderful place of interconnectivity with water and still today one of the consequences that the British when they rightly chased the Romans out one of the consequences the Romans hadn't finished interconnecting all the water systems that up to today in England all of them not interconnected maybe if the Romans had spent a few more years it might be like how we have it in St. Vincent and down in the Grenadines we have new systems and there is a sound and adequate supply of water we have the reverse osmosis process in Beckway new tanks down in, Ghana, down in Union Island and, and Miro and the like so that's the first thing I want to talk about water the second thing I want to talk about is garbage collection and disposal twenty years ago only in tongue and the surrounding areas that they collected garbage you remember that you remember when you take the plane and you're coming in at Annisville on the left hand side the first thing that tourists see <laughs> is a garbage dump they call it the incinerator <laughs> you, you, I, I wonder maybe maybe I wrong so long uh, young people you don't remember it you know because and those who are older have you have you have amnesia propaganda hot up your head with amnesia no no before the end of 2001 we collect garbage from fancy in the northeast to Fitzhugh's in the northwest once a week and dispose of it and the charge is reasonable and in the grenadines where you have where the the, the, the the islands are more fragile the environment is more fragile we collect it twice a week and it's only recently that most people in beckway start to pay since we put the charge on the electricity meter You remember in the countryside among the rat and cockroach? You see, Sister John here in Chaps, she come and meet it good. She remember anything I say in here, you know? She remember one thing I say in here. You are 20 little bit. Yeah. All you know, all you grew up knowing, that's some va some some vehicles come wrong in the morning early making some music as though they're selling ice cream to collect the garbage that's a, that is what you know that is what you know you don't know what ralph is talking to you about and what bonds will tell you yeah now immunization of children under the age of five statistically 100 percent do you know that in some states in the united states as little as 30 something percent of the children under the age of five are immunized i read an article in the new york times even a middle class area upstate in new york you have some people saying that immunization is bad for your health and then people start to get a lot of measles and mumps <laughs> and 
Believe the superstition and go back to the science. But we ain't bothering with the superstition. We believe in the science. And what do we do here? Once your child go into a school, the law is you have to have your immunization certificate. Statistically 100%. I'm talking health, you know. I see a doctor in a flip-flop gunsling or whatever it is. I don't know what he had on. With a video in a short pants as we walk off the road. You know, unannounced inside of a place with the man in charge of one of the, the, the senior maintenance officers pointing to the roof say that there is a he said there's mole when it was mole you know it's a dark spot I don't know if there was a little leak there I bet you anything that if I if I go to every one of your homes or you come to mine including the residence of the prime minister you're going to find you have a little problem here there might be a leak you ain't fix it yet some of you pay a lot of money for plumbing you have to bend down and need to turn off the 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 the, the stop cock so as to save money you going to take a video and put it up that kind of a unprofessional conduct is designed for one thing only to malign and bring down the hospital for some agenda completely unconnected to the proper delivery of health services in the country it is perfectly in order for a medical doctor if he wants to get involved in plain politics but it's always a dangerous thing to do because politicians Nobody better in this country at politics than me. So if you want to get involved in politics, get involved. You know, I ain't got much loud in my mouth. I will talk when I want to talk. And nobody ever sue me. No. 100% immunization. Let us deal with maternal deaths. Statistically in this country, maternal deaths is a zero. You have one a year. One. I don't mean one percent, you know. One. And if we have two, I want to find out why. Infant mortality is below 15 per 10,000. Not as good as Cuba, which, which is below 10. But it's a good number. And we're trying to bring it down. It used to be in the high 20s. These are health statistics. And in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, We, on an average, gone past the book of Job. In the 14th chapter, Job said, three score and ten. And if by reason of strength, you may get up to four score or more. Well, the average lifespan of a Vincentian male is 74. I am now 73, so... If I play the averages, it's only one more year I have, so I could talk as much as I want to talk. <laughs> what you could do to me? And then, woman, 75 years. Even the woman them work harder than the men, they seem to live longer. That's a mystery to be explained. Maybe the woman 
take their health a little bit more seriously than the men and go to the doctor more often and get checked up and so on. You know, that might be one of the reasons without the, the machono. These are the unvanished facts before us. No. How do we rate in spending money on health? There's a document entitled Expenditure on Health as a Percentage of the Gross Domestic Product for the year 2014. And this wouldn't have changed, if anything, no, it has improved our position. Gross domestic product is the measurement in a country, the aggregate of all the goods and services produced in any one year. St. Vincent and the Grenadines tops the chart in CARICOM in the category expenditure on health as a percentage of gross domestic product. St. Vincent and the Grenadines spends annually 8.6% of its GDP on health. Next in line is the Bahamas, 7.7%. Followed by Haiti, 7.6%, and Barbados, 7.5%. It doesn't mean the aggregate of the money which we spend is more, but as a percentage of the wealth that we create, we spend more. Of course, we need to increase our wealth so that if you have that percentage, it would be a higher amount in real terms. You know, the nearest OECS member country to St. Vincent and the Grenadines in this category is in St. Lucia. In St. Lucia, we spend 6.7%. We spend 8.6% of our GDP. The other OECS countries, they range between 5.1% and 6.1%. Now, you see this? This book, I brought it because a lot of people don't pay attention to it, you know, we adopt it in Parliament. This is the one for 2019. Estimates of revenue and expenditure for the year 2019. This year, we are spending $83.2 million, government that is on health. You hear me? I am talking this afternoon, going into the evening facts. No. What was it in 2001? 39.7 million. We are spending no 110 percent more than in 2001 and health we are spending more than twice you get it huh. i know that people measure the health system on the basis of what happens at milton Cato. but i tell you something Douglas Slater used to say, you come to the hospital, if you're sick, what you have to try, the health system has to try to do is to keep you healthy. But of course, we know we have to go to hospital at some time. In 2001, $11.1 million was spent on this hospital, Today, we are spending nearly $25 million, over 110% more. 
today this hospital here you know is an enterprise the only individual place that has more people working is don't want, if you take must take as one there is no school there is no enterprise in this country that has as many workers as this hospital 614 you know it's so much you know so many people walking down here 614 122 or 35 percent more than in 2001 the hospital ain't get any bigger the population has increased only marginally now i hear they say that we don't get enough doctors Well, in 2001, you had 51 doctors. Today, we have 88. You know that's how many doctors we have down here? <laughs> I want to tell you. No. And for a hospital of just over 200 beds, the number of doctors to the beds is not unreasonable. In fact, comparatively, it's a good number. When you do the comparisons in other places across the world, you may say, well, you may have 88 doctors, but you don't have some real good ones. No, we have experienced ones. Because 19 of them are consultants. Consultants is the top category. It used to be 15, 2001. Because we have more specialities now. Senior registrars, which is the next in line. There used to be six, there are now nine. Registrars is the next one below. There were six, now there are 14. Medical officers, there were 15, they now have 25. And of course, there were eight interns, and now you have 20, 22. It varies. That's what you have. So Luke is right. We have to manage the resources better. And that is why we're going to have a chief executive officer down here at the hospital. Because you have a hospital administrator, a good woman, but she addresses the kitchen. The workers who bones represent down here. In the kitchen and the grounds and so on. The medical director. is the man in charge of the doctors but a doctor can't discipline a doctor so well and he had the chief nursing officer who is in charge of the nurses and a, a head nurse here and the same thing and the farmer the chief pharmacist is in charge of the pharmacy and the person the chief technologist is in charge of the lab and everybody holding those positions are good people you know but you need one person who holds all this thing together who is in charge and who has a structure you can't expect the permanent secretary to be the one he has too many things doing and you don't want the minister to interfere in it so that is coming so we have to organize 
do the management better. Well, you know, they said nurses. You have 332 nursing staff of all different categories, from auxiliary right up to the top of the nursing profession. In 2001, you had 254. You have 78 more now. What about staff, nurses, and above? That critical area. Was 120 in 2001 is 198 now. 78 more or 65% more. I keep telling you, the population ain't gone up in the country except marginally. Of course, we have to manage the number of nurses. Better too. You know, the education revolution has let loose the demand for more and more education. And I support that. But you can't have 15% or 20% of the nurses on study leave. That has to be better controlled. Because while we want you to get extra training, the reality is your primary obligation is to take care of the patients. And we could structure the training program much better and have the leave done in a more systematic way. Of course, there was no modern medical diagnostic center. Remember when we start that? The criticisms? Well, it, 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 it gone up in the red zone when Sofri blew, it go happen. It's Sofri really blew. Milton Keaton, remember what really safe? Eh? Anybody who talk like that, they mean that St. Vincent must only be a green yard. All of we must move out and leave it here for people to come bring the dead to bury. If that is what they want. It could be a friend. Or you, or you could plan and say, well, you can't do nothing up there. So what happened? Everybody must build a trash house up there because of it might blow sometime. Yeah? Well, what, what kind of foolishness people talk? Then the next thing is that you must bring it down closer to the city. You have to decentralize health services. And of course, we are planning the acute referral hospital which is going to be out at Arnesville the site has been selected by the World Bank by the end of this month or the next month we should have the complete design very involved design they're going to give us is it culture man today? yeah yeah Culture man, they're going to give me a book at the end of this month or sometime in November with every single room in that hospital. 130 beds, 132 beds with every piece of equipment to be inside of whichever room. Estimated cost at the moment is about 50 million US dollars. Camilo went up to Washington the other day to look for the money and his promising. Not through the US government, you know, I'm talking to the World Bank. There's, there's a government, there's a government which had offered us a soft loan of 20 million, but I told them that the 20 is not enough. So we might, if they could allow us to use that 20 to build a new courthouse and a new parliament building going up where, along where they, just above the library, you know, just above that area, since it looks as though we can get the 50 million dollars US elsewhere.
you know and Kingston Milton Kato Memorial and that one out of Danisville will be run as one you will keep the World Pediatric Center here the World Pediatric Project you will still have accident and emergency here we have to have accident and emergency out there but we'll be doing a lot of tertiary health care out there the overs will be coming how are we doing this thing they buy this with jesus now mental health We fix up mental health. Well, before you go to mental health, community health services. Community health services are the clinics and some adult or some other facilities. Community health services in 2001 they spent 4.9 million dollars. This year we are spending 13.9 million dollars on community health services. Nine million dollars more. Over 180 percent over 2001. And you had 176 persons working in the community health services in 2001. It's 353 now. These include the 39 clinics, three polyclinics. Remember, you didn't have any of those, you know. People tend to forget those. Stubbs, Bookamend, and Maracua. The Beckway Hospital, we build that over. How oh, they say Ralph, you want to do nothing in Beckway? Eh? Build that over, build brand new primary school. Primary school is they had there for all the years since the 1930s. Or the Watland Dab with a little bit of concrete covering it with a pit toilet, you know. You know that? Did you know that? You knew that one? Yes. Is your fantastic primary school I build there? I love the people in Beckway. Love them very much. And other Union Island Health Center and other things like family planning, HIV and AIDS unit, the nutrition and dietetics unit, some dental services. They used to have 176 persons working in community health services. You have 353 now, you know. And I hear one or two lawyers running off them out. And I say to them, if you pay a little bit more money, honestly, as taxes, maybe we could employ a few more. Because some pay in the taxes. And what about some of the doctors who are making plenty of money private? Eh? Of course, when the government paying them, they get taxed on that. I don't want to pick a fight with anybody. Because I love everybody. But the point is this. When you decide to play politician with me, I have to talk. Let's work together, man. Let's work together for the betterment of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. That's what we're all about. Now, done the same thing with mental health. We, Luke built a, a new facility there. And the Lewis Pen at home. It used to be a weight on my soul. You know, since there's a whole place deteriorating and then the storms came. And everybody will tell you this in the cabinet and in Ministry of Health. That is something which I get vexed about. 
the slow pace to fix up, to build. I say it will be temporary, as Luke outlined, because we're going to tomorrow meet in some people, seeing if we can get money from them to build a state-of-the-art facility when we knock it down, the old Lewis Pond at home. But we, where the nurses' hostel was, we've expanded the place. When we open it in a few weeks' time, before Christmas, you'd be so happy. And I said to the young pastor, Isaac was there. And the reason why I got so vexed when there was slowness and when people want to be obtuse, I would walk out of a meeting, you know. I said, listen, when you're ready to tell me that you're all going ahead with this thing properly, Call me back. I am standing this. You know, vulnerable people, old people, poor people, we got to take special care of them. And as I said today, they are our neighbors. They're walking metaphorically on the road to Jericho. And they're hurt. They're wounded. It's a dangerous road to walk, to walk the road to Jericho. And The priest passed and didn't stop. The Levite, who is a public servant, passed and didn't stop. But the lowest of the people at the time, the Samaritan, he passed. But as, this is a story that Christ gave to the lawyer who asked, and who is my neighbor? And this is what Christ was telling him on the road to Jericho. And the Samaritan cleaned the wounds of the person on the road who was set upon by a robber, beaten. Good Samaritan cleaned his wounds and bound his wounds and took him to an inn Give the innkeeper money. Keep him for me. And that if you spend more money on him when I pass by, I will pay you. Well, you understand why the weight was on my heart, my conscience, my soul. And we have to be our neighbor's keeper. And our neighbor is not the person who just on the road to Jericho, you know. Is the person who we go to on the road to Jericho because the least among us, we have to go to them. And that facility is a beautiful facility. And I have to thank everybody who was involved in it. And in addition to that, We, we're spending about 2.5, 2.6 when the numbers come in around that area, maybe a little bit more on that facility. But the population of the elderly growing. The fastest growing segment of the population. Over 60 is the elderly. It is growing by one third. The young people are still the largest single category, but they're not growing as fast as those who are over 60. So we have to take care of them, and particularly those who are indigent. Now, 
we have done so many important things down at this hospital over the last since we in office We completely revamped and, modern, and, and modernized the pediatric ward and facility with a partnership with the World Pediatric Project and the Most Deep Charitable Trust. This is a top quality facility. So down here you will find a neonatal intensive care unit, an adolescent unit, and a pediatric critical care unit, inclusive, inclusive of a burns unit. Right down here, you know. And the World Pediatric Project, since 2002, they have seen over 7,500 Vincentians between the age of childbirth to 21. And they have done surgical interventions of 750. Open heart surgery here, you know. Scoliosis of the spine. Twist up bones. Orthopedic operations of a complicated type. Cleft on the, 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 the children, them lips and so on and so forth. All of that free of charge. And if you need specialist follow-up of an intensive nature, they take you from here with your parent or your guardian to the United States, either at Virginia University there, or in Pennsylvania, or in St. Louis, Missouri, free of charge. And look, for the age zero childbirth to 21, which is one third of the population, critical pediatric care is delivered to those young persons of a first world quality free of charge you can't get that in brooklyn and you're talking to me about a dark spot in a roof in a gunsling and a short pants and pointing yeah 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 you know I wish everyone good luck. <laughs> we have reconfigured the accident and emergency department to better serve the population. We have recently upgraded this hospital $5.4 million. What did we do? We refurbished three operating theaters and we construct an additional theater. The additional one which we constructed, especially for the World Pediatric Project. We rehabilitate the female surgical wing, including the female surgical ward. We refurbished the maternity A ward we rehabilitate the intensive care unit. And if we need more beds, and you need more intensive care beds here, we have at the Modern Medical, or the Form 1 service. We renovate the kitchen on the roof of the hospital. We increase emergency water storage capacity. And we increase the generator capacity. We acquire a CT scan equipment and place it in an improved physical space. There was no CT scan. I remember, you know, when Vincent Beach of Blessed Memory had asked a Minister of Health a question. 
in parliament about why they don't get a, a CT scan. Dr. Thomas will probably remember. He wasn't the Minister of Health because it was sensible to have answered in this way. He answered Vincent. The person answered Vincent and said that Vincent watching too much soap opera, General Hospital. <laughs> where, where you think we could get CT scan here? You hear me? And we have the city scan. One was destroyed with the weather. The, and we, we buy another one. We replace it. Put it somewhere else. And we're in the process, we want to acquire a second one. And we are examining to bring an MRI facility. Day by day, sweet Jesus. And the creation of herbal prop treatment room to treat diabetic ulcers. I will tell you how people are. I came down to the hospital and I saw someone who was getting the herbal prop treatment it costs all the services for the for the medication even though we're getting it at cost from Cuba is 5,000 US dollars for the actual medication per person 13,500 and we put the hospital services and the doctors and everything together is almost thirty thousand dollars for the treatment everything in and this person i i saw that person i said how are you going with the hover pop p treatment he said, good the doctor's good he said man but something wrong with this hospital you see that chair they didn't have a cushion You hear me? That's equivalent to like a man in a gun sling and point in the roof. You're getting harbor property, you're getting the treatment for thirty thousand dollars. But you worry that the chair, which should have a cushion in it, don't have a cushion in it. So anybody can sit down, say that the cushion had gone, the cover had gone to be washed. No, it is true the cushion should be there. But you don't say, thank God for the blessing. Is you drink all the juicy them and drink the strong rum and do all kind of thing and make you get diabetes. And you get the treatment free to fix you up. But all you can do is to complain about a cushion. A man like that don't have the spirit of the good Samaritan no and in Georgetown at Modern Medical we are doing a we're developing up there as an oncology center the cancer center we have the machine to do the mixing of all the requisite treatment and so on and we are examining what may be required for us to even do radiation and we are working with some people from Guyana in this regard you know when you hear that I give you this story when I talk to you about this when I tell you the truth as to what is happening when you hear the other fellows talk the answer like how Pilate had answered Christ at the time when Pilate washed his hand 
And Christ talked about the truth. And Pilate said, what is the truth? <laughs> well, the truth involves love of people and love of, love of country and commitment. That is part of the truth. Love your neighbor like you love yourself. That is part of the truth. I see Pastor Isaac is smiling. I ain't coming to your profession. But these are timeless verities which are there in the good book, which we must utilize. One of the areas where we get criticisms down, at, down here is accident and emergency. There are six areas which we need to lift our game on. Better tr first, better training of the nursing staff in emergency medicine and life support, advanced cardiac support, and orthopedic nursing. We have to make sure that our nurses or good nurses go into some of these areas. Second, we have to ensure less rotation of nursing and auxiliary staff who are skilled in accident and emergency. Too often, the trained and experienced staff are rotated or transferred and go to other places. You think I don't know what's happening? Thirdly, we have to facilitate more prompt attendance by consultants or senior medical staff. Often this lack of promptitude creates unnecessary anxieties for patients, even when they are in the proper care of competent junior medical staff. Four, provide a sufficient amount of life support equipment, like cardiac monitoring and consumables, the medicines, the IV drips, and dressing supplies. Even though we spend over $15 million on pharmaceuticals and other medical supplies a year, still, we need to manage that properly because some of the supplies are wasted and some are misplaced or find themselves where they're not supposed to be. Then, fifth, more information in the public in the public about what accident to the to the public about what accident and emergency is about. Too many patients misuse or abuse the service in that their ailment connects neither to accident nor emergency. And six, we have to improve the facility of the waiting area of accident and emergency. When you go to Modern Medical in Georgetown, admittedly it's a newer place to look, and you see it, you feel comfortable in the place. We have to make that waiting area more comfortable and it shouldn't cost us a lot of money to do. You notice I'm telling you all what is good, but I'm telling you other things which we have to do. Why? Because I want us to deliver the excellent service. How do we, how do we deal with the gaps in the tertiary healthcare? We deal with the gaps with with World Pediatric Project, at the office of the Prime Minister, we send off lots of people on referral from the, from the, the Ministry of Health. We spend a lot of money to send them to Cuba, where we get good rates from, to Barbados and Trinidad. And for certain things we bring, like if somebody has a a neurological operation to be done. We bring an expert like Dr. Kaulesa. 
And he does the operations right here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And he charges us and we pay. But it's not very often that you need neurological operations. And then modern medical. We have about 170 people up there working. That's roughly in that area. We have 21 Cubans. Doctors, nurses, other medical personnel and technical people. When we have having the Cubans come there, there were several lines of attack. Well, Ralph had them up there because he loved God, the communists them around him. The second line of attack, what happened? You don't got doctors from St. Vincent who are walk. And I lied to that. Ralph bringing them because part of the money which they get paid go to the Cuban government. After all that Cuba has done for St. Vincent and the Grenadines, you still have a handful of people with loud mouths and influence bad mouth in this country into what they're doing we're not going to we're not going to ac accept and have the cuban system as how it has evolved but we must say honestly that they have helped us with education helped us with health helped us with the argyle international airport and other things and we must be grateful and don't be bad-minded now you see a fellow from Byra named Mikey Woods Michael Woods call him Michael no Michael and I know the fellow who also is charged for cutting his tummy Mikey Woods intestines came out you saw the video Everybody thinks that he's going to die. He's taken to the hospital in Georgetown, Modern Medical. And a Cuban doctor, a surgeon who has 22 years experience, serving different places. You see, he did operations like that. It's a big operation. As far as Mike Woods is concerned, you think he's concerned whether the hands which come in to fix him up are communist hands or capitalist hands? All you want to know that they are competent hands. In any case, not every Cuban is a communist, you know. And when they stitching up, you think, you think Mikey concerned about whether the stitches are communist stitches or capitalist stitches? That is the kind of foolishness that you get. Thank God. A surgeon like that, just like Dr. our own Dr. Duggan, who had about 30 years experience in the United States and was a top surgeon, general surgeon at a New Jersey hospital. People like those, you can't go on the supermarket shelf and buy them like Kellogg's Corn Flakes. A particular skill. And all of those services and more are what we are seeking to deliver. And the patient's charter is to say to you, you have certain rights which we are guaranteeing for you and we're putting them out. But you have certain responsibilities too. You know, the, the main causes of death in this country are those associated with diabetes and hypertension, cancer, heart problems, accidents, and criminal violence. Most of these causes are connected to personal behavior and lifestyles. So you have to be responsible also for your health. You have a personal responsibility for your health. Dr. Thomas, 
is a skilled air, nose, and throat specialist. But he is not a magician. So we have to take better care of ourselves. Otherwise, we put a burden on our families and we put a burden on the state. Now all this money which is spent, you may be saying, but Ralph, you collect a lot down by the hospital. You know how much money we collected last year? $2.4 million. You hear me? And out of that, nearly half a million dollars is from the hospitals, from the medical schools for their rotations. I will ask you a question. I will ask a nurse or a, a, or a, a, a health educator. You know what it costs for a, on an average for a patient a day here? If I tell you the number, 600 EC dollars. You go by beach coma. If you pay that a night, you'll get a good room and you get good food and good treatment. A hospital is an expensive place. As you lie down on the bed, the medication, the electricity, the water, the bedding, the nurses coming at different hours, the doctors, all of them, the food, the x-ray. You know, I was down here one night. And... A young lady had her ankle twisted coming down a step. The vehicle which brought her, there was a, it was a Sunday. One of the male attendants came with a wheelchair to go inside. There were two doctors on duty, a junior one and a slightly higher one. They checked out. The nurse came, they give her injection. The doctor said, you need an x-ray. They send the ambulance to pick up the lady, a lady from Trinidad, who would have been a gentleman, to do the x-ray. She came, she did the x-ray, free, but this is emergency. The doctor banded her foot, gave her a prescription. By that time it was almost midnight. Now somebody might have grumbled and say, well, you mean to say the, the pharmacy open at midnight? After all, they get free, you know. We are attended by a doctor, a nurse, non-medical personnel, x-ray. Thank God for Mr. Games. Mr. Games was open because, you know, he should get a medal, you know. Mr. Games should get a medal. And you want to tell me our medical system, our health system is in the dogs. Only angry people with access to grime could talk like that. I believe that I have given you enough tonight for you to see what we have been doing and what we have in the pipeline doing actively, actively for all categories of persons. And we're training the doctors and we're training the nurses and we're supporting them. But there's another conversation for the education revolution. And this charter, 
would also tell some doctors who believe most of the doctors you know most of the doctors give the patients their due but some these the declaration of these patients rights is not for the doctors and nurses who are quite professional and who know that you have to do these things is for those who think that the patients have no concern really and treat them however they want thank god those doctors and nurses are few and far between and i want to thank the doctors here I want to thank the nurses, I want to thank all the staff at the hospital and in the health system and all the administrators, people in the Ministry of Health for what they have been doing. We have a sound system of health. There are weaknesses here and there which we have systems to plug. Just the other day, Seven Palestinian doctors came. Eight. They did 40 something operations in seven days. So we use foreign medical missions. The Taiwanese come sometimes. Dr. Kaulesa, he comes. Dr. Nantan of Incension comes with his team does internal medicine and where there are gaps we fill them in this way and with cooperative agreements until we plug all of them locally as much as possible and when we you see the progress which we have made at modern medical and more progress will be made at the acute referral hospital I ain't giving you no Farmville Hospital. I'm giving you a real thing. You see the one up there in, up in um, Georgetown. And you'll see the one at Andersville. And you'll see the changes which continue to be made here to improve our lives, our health, our well-being. And this charter is one of the strategic software matters. There are many hardware things, but this is part of the software for us to deliver better health service. I congratulate the Minister and the Ministry of Health on this. Thank you very much. I think we can do better than that. I mean, you know, when, when, when the Prime Minister speaks, you really can't help but listen. Um, it's as if you're sitting in an institution where you're just endowed with a flow of knowledge which you embraced and you really welcome with a, with a breath of fresh air. But it is amazing. And we have learned a lot here today. And for those of you who sat here and those who listen to us, if we have not really learned or take anything away about the gains, the achievements in our healthcare system, I think we are far removed from reality. And what pains a lot, you know, is that the achievements are not in the skies, you know. The achievements are not on Mars. It is so painful that they are staring us in our face. And we are using all of these facilities and all of these services every day every single day 
And I think we have to be very mindful from where we have come. And I say one thing and I will say it here now. We have really and truly came from so far that those of you who are, are young and not as old as I am, you know, we are born into certain achievements here and we do not stop to think from where did these come. A lot of this achievement was not here, you know. Some of us are able as public servants to enjoy a certain level of monetary remuneration and systems of allowances. The years that many persons have traversed and worked hard to ensure that these things are here for us. I mean, we have to be very mindful of these things. Very trivial matters sometimes, or very little things sometimes, cause us to lose the focus. You know, a light is not operational. And you see, it's, it's malfunctioned for quite a few hours. But if we are to measure these things against the benefits, you know, Dr. Slater once said to me, he says that there are things which will go wrong, you know. And he quotes Murphy's law. But he said, you know what? 95 or even more percent of the time, things go right. But the one percent that goes wrong, people behave as if it's the end of the world. And I think we have to be very, very mindful of where we are and from where we have come. Now, we have left a very entertaining activity for you. And I really want us to sit back. This will really and truly help to refresh us and top us off. We will welcome one of our community health aides at this point in time to come and give us a monologue. She has done very well when we opened the, the um, polyclinic in Lauren Dabry. You know, I try for Carl Darius since 4 o'clock I try for Carl Darius and I ain't getting no answer. Let me try one more time. Darius, I try for Carl Darius since 4 o'clock. Where you been? Where you answering your phone? Watch me. You remember I tell you anything you hear the Prime Minister say for believe? You remember I tell you so? Listen, you remember when the polyclinic opened in Boko Ment, that the Prime Minister said that the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment going to launch the, the charter for the patients? You don't remember that? Well, me call if I tell you, me been for mine. Yes, it come. So, hey, no, what do you mean? He tell you about the rights and the responsibility of the clinic, you know, the hospital. Rights, you're going to know your rights and your responsibilities. Let me tell you, Darius, you have to go get one. When you go, go. No, 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 no. Me not have time for go read out nothing, give you panty. No, no, no. Me just get the thing out and me do a browse through. So me, okay, let me tell you one thing. It's, I just want me telling you, you know, because I always tell you, wherever you hear the Prime Minister say, you must believe. Well, hear they say that any health facility you go, that they are discriminated, regardless to your race, regardless to your, 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 your political affiliation, regardless to your sexual orientation. So let me tell you something. When you call your friend, Caitlyn Jenner in America, tell she he me say that when she come to, he come to St. Vincent, he could go at any other health facility. Don't forget enough. Man, no, I tell you everything the Prime Minister said. Believe, it can just come true. So what me for tell you another one? Me tell you me no browsing through the thing me not get for read the thing yet. Yeah. Watch me. It plainly say here. Let me read it for you. It say, the government shall take steps on a continuous basis to ensure that essential and quality healthcare facilities are available. And we make you think the modern medical place the out of Georgetown. You imagine if the place it had been dead. What would have happened to the man there when all the intestines come out of? Where you think he would have there? So you see that is what's happening. So when you see you, you see you read the rights and the responsibility in the charter. You have to believe. Yes, me not read no more mango. Come and go and get your thing yourself. 
let me, one more go tell you about, one more. It said that the, the patient is entitled to know their identity and role and so on and so forth. When you go to the clinic, sometimes you don't even know who are who. One day my neighbor go to the clinic, she come back. She say, how the nurse gave she some tablet. Me say, which nurse? The RN she na know. The NS she na know. Me say, but how you don't know? He say, nothing about markup. She be have pretty color clothes. So you see, if you don't identify, so in the charter, they have to identify themselves. And that's what me love about this thing. And here you now, one type of charter talk about privacy. And that's an important one. That is, let me tell you. One time, me been at the clinic, me go for me family planning injection. And me sit down right in front of the nurse station, and, all, and the nurse been all give me, she asked me where me want it, and me bottom and me hand. Me say, give me palm me hand. And she been just going to give me and me hand right there when this crazy man come in and ask, say, he come for his injection. And he turned to me and asked me if I just get crazy injection too. So you see, if she be carrying me in a private place, the crazy man, man went to have to know my business. I want to know my business. Joel, I tell you, anything you hear, the Prime Minister said, believe. They said that they're bringing the charter for patients and it, they write it. Mary, the number for you. You have to go and get it yourself. What do you mean? You're, not a, you're going up a Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment and you will get yours. Who for ask for? Ask for the PS. No, how the PS come in, Pat Spoon. The PS mean the Permanent Secretary. Just go up there and act. I don't like how it is getting on or not. You don't get on like somebody who has sense. Yes, yeah, so listen to me now. But you have a responsibility to turn up. Don't think you could just go and miss your appointment and walk into the clinic and say, not me, me, me miss my appointment. When it comes to health, health is a shared responsibility. You have a responsibility, the nurses have a responsibility, and everybody, it then are the thing right here. And I tell you, anything you hear the PM say, believe. If the PM say go and get your, your copy, there is please me begging you, go and get your copy and educate yourself. And if you can't get it everything one time, when you go for seek medical attention, work with it. I tell you already, and I will tell you again, anything the PM say, anything Ralph say, you must believe. And if Ralph say five, believe it five. You hear me? I have to go now. Take care of yourself. I'm going and do what I have to do. Because it done that. Thank you. Bye, Doris. You know, you you you, you would not <coughs> you would not believe that she put all of this together in maybe less than an hour. Very tremendous. We have gotten to that stage where we are now going to unveil our our charter, um, but just before we unveil this, we will want to be able to, to say thanks to all who have made this possible. And we will ask Shanique John to come and move the vote of thanks for us, and then thereafter we'll unveil the charter here, and then we'll move downstairs to the accident and emergency to also unveil the one that has been mounted there already. John. Thank you very much, P.S. Sorry, I need a little hack there. Um, good evening, everyone. I take this opportunity to thank you for being a part of this wonderful initiative. First and foremost, I want to thank the Almighty God for affording us the opportunity to be alive where we can witness this wonderful initiative. Um, Dr. the Honorable Rafi Gonsal for giving us a very historic view, historic perspective of where we were, where we are now, and the projection of definitely where we intend to go. The Honorable Minister Luke Brown, we want to thank you very much for embarking on this wonderful initiative. We indeed are grateful. Dr. Simone Kiza Beach, for your remarks on behalf of the entire Ministry of Health, very informative. That's Mr. Cutbutt Knight, who chaired this evening's proceedings. The entire Ministry of Health staff 
wellness and the environment, all the different departments, all the heads of departments, the entire staff who supported in one way or the other by participating this evening, by attending or sending their well wishes, we say thank you to our ministers um, and other representatives from the various ministries. We say thank you for once again a collaborative effort and we do continue to have your support as we embark on other initiatives. To our patients and specially invited guests, we thank you for taking the time out of this afternoon into this evening to be in a part of this initiative. To our media, we thank you guys so much for the coverage and we do look forward for your upcoming feature across the different media houses in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Ladies and gentlemen, please get home. And the St. Vincent and the Grenadines National Lottery for providing us with the chairs that you see here present in this room. For those persons who assisted in one way or the other, we say thank you. Please get home safely as we um, bring the curtains down on this evening's proceedings. Thank you very much, Ms. John. So now we're going to have an unveiling of the charter by the Honorable Prime Minister and our own um, Minister of Health, Luke Brown. So I vote a moment now as uh, the Honorable Prime Minister joins the Minister responsible for Health, Wellness and the Environment uh, in unveiling a display of the document or the charter that is being launched here today. The Patients' Charter here at the atrium of the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital. So a round of applause by the audience all the important parts of the charter is covered in this display uh, of course so many to, so much so many uh, lines to read there it's it's not possible for us to see exactly exactly all the details of it from this vantage point but for those with the benefit of uh, viewing via uh, facebook live you can see that it's a very uh, large uh, mountain of the charter and uh, if you go closely more close to it you'll get to read all the different areas the preamble the uh, rights and the responsibilities etc move downstairs to the accident and emergency we where we have actually mounted one of the patient charter there so we will do the unveiling of that as well too and this one will be mounted somewhere up here in the atrium which could be quite visible to all to be reminded of their rights and responsibilities. Again, thank you. So, I'm as we wrap up this uh, portion of the broadcast, uh, unfortunately, we wouldn't be able to take you down, at least on radio, uh, to the uh, unveiling of the uh, setup at accident and emergency. Uh, but uh, we'll also want to say thanks to all of those who join us, join us via Facebook Live, those who also join us uh, via radio, NBC Radio and on Star Radio as well, those who listen there. We ask that you stay with us. For those who are viewing our Facebook feed, we ask that you stay with us. We'll try to bring you some visual of uh, the procession to downstairs and the accident and emergency area where we'll have the unveiling of the display of the Charter of Patient Rights and Responsibilities, the document that we're launching, uh, that has been launched here uh, this evening. As I wrap up this end of the broadcast for radio, many thanks to the technician, Junior Byron Cox, our driver earlier, uh, shilling for Douglas and uh, thanks as well to the support staff of STV online for providing the visuals for our Facebook page uh, led by Steve Wallace uh, with assistance from Aisha Baby. Uh, on behalf of also uh, Johnny Strick at Master Control when we started and now Cassius Crookshank and um, Calvin Harry taking you back to Master Control from the Milton Keto Memorial Hospital. Good evening.